This video is brought to you by BetUS Sportsbook and Casino. What's going on, Buff Nation? Welcome back to another video. We got a lot to go over. First of all, it's Coach Prime's birthday today. He also had a grandchild in the middle of his presser, which is absolutely incredible to have a grandbaby on your birthday. It's got to be fantastic. So that happened. Coach Prime claps back at that's not only a coach, but a couple of reporters. We can update on the team. And, and in the most of all of this, Lamb a nice a former five-star offensive lineman. It's going to be a great show. If you haven't smashed the sub button, we're about 90 away from 10,000. Let's get there by the end of the week, boys and girls, and let's roll the intro. Oh my goodness. Good to see you. Happy to have you back. Let's dive right into it. For first order of business, we kind of start talking football, and then it gets a little rambunctious, which we'll get into in here in just a moment. But they talk about Damian Lewis, what he brings to the team, defensive line coach. And look, he kind of, he said this before about bringing in more NFL guys, and he's like, the, the importance of having these guys here. Um, and, I, and I love it. He always kind of says the same thing. He's like, look, if you're going to ask somebody about a good restaurant, you're going to ask somebody who's been there, who's done that. And these kids want to be able to work with and work alongside of people who have been there, who have done that. And that's where these coaches who from the NFL are coming in and are being able to provide that alongside uh, Warren Sapp. So he spoke about that a little bit, talked about the cornerback room with uh, Travis Hodge and McKinney. And he goes, look, this DB room is one of the best. He didn't say this exactly, but one of the best. I mean, we've got multiple guys, five to six guys, that can cover all day, every day, which will allow for that defensive line, that linebacker room, the edge rushing room, which we'll get into in just a moment, to be able to get to the quarterback. They're not having to get as quickly. They can kind of run the route, be a little more patient with it, uh, be thorough in their process. Look, this defense, I think a lot of people argue the offensive line was the, the trouble. Put Giving up 40 to Colorado State, the defense was just as much as a, as a, as a factor uh, as well when you're giving up, and also to Oregon and USC, good 40 to 50 points uh, on those two big games. So obviously all areas need to be worked on, but this cornerback room, which was really just reliant on Travis Hunter last year with guys learning the ropes, bringing in these two uh, veterans is going to be absolutely huge with, again, McKinney and Hodge. Hodge from Liberty, I believe. And McKinney from Oklahoma State. It's been so long now since the trench pulled. I've, I forgot where everybody is from. But big time pickups uh, for those guys. He also talks about the edge rushing room, which was awesome. Samson Okanola uh, and those guys that came from Pitt. And Pitt head coach took a shot uh, not too long ago. Says when you become a head coach, you inherit that team and you coach that team. Someone wants to leave, that's great. You don't kick them out. I disagree with that whole process. That's not why I got in the game. This is this was his response when asked about Colorado's roster uh, overhaul. Again, a lot of coaches had opinions about this when it happened. But now, Coach Prime's got two of two of one of Pitt's best players. Uh, Okanol, I think, was first, and then they, they landed the other edge rusher. And look, I said this could be a combo package uh, watching this thing unfold. And these two guys, we've talked about it early on in the year, were absolute monsters at Pitt in the ACC, but listen to what he had to say. You gotta love it. Uh, Mr. Hayes and Oku Lola, Oku, can I, Oku Lola. Oku, did I say that right? Yeah. Scared me, I can't believe it. But my, first of all, I want to digress a bit and thank the head coach from Pittsburgh for really preparing those young men for us. He did a great job. I love those two young men. They're really great players and they're gonna be pros. And I heard that someone took a shot at one of them uh, verbally. <laughs> so, Mr. Hayes just wanted me to make sure I add that in for him. But thank you, Pittsburgh. I appreciate everything. I love it. I love the little job. Look, here's the thing. This you're gonna you're gonna see this all over. I mean, anything that Colorado does, they had that the viral post earlier today where they had the darts and it clipped and it looked like it was like not the same thing. That Twitter post went viral with everybody. Everyone had fun with it. Anytime something happens to Colorado, it seems like it's going to just run with fire, and it is a blast to watch from, from all corners. But this particular presser, there was a lot of receipts that were brought up. There was a lot of pushback, and there is going to be clips left and right. And to be fair, this this if this was the only thing that came from it, it would be big. But he shuts down, obliterates a couple of reporters, given the stories they've written over the past year or so. And he's kind of just like, look, I've had it. I'm not, I'm not answering anything. I'm not taking any questions from you. CBS Sports was one of them. Just shut them down really quickly. Again, I tried to see what was the cause for it. I'm still looking in to see like what was the beef. The only thing I saw was back in July, they wrote an article saying that he was one of the worst coaches in the Big 12. Don't know if that was what it was alluding to. I, he just said, look, I'm not, I'm not associated with CBS. However, he was uh, went back with this uh, guy who was named Sean Keller, I believe. We'll play the clip, and then I'll give you kind of a little bit of a background 
of what happened with, with this guy and where this is coming from. Again, people are going to drag this situation, make it seem like he's a child. He seems like that. I have an opinion about it. I'll tell you about it just after I play the clip, but it's, uh, it's a good one. Coach Sean Keeler, the Denver Post. Happy summer, my man. You, you don't like us, man. Why do you do this to yourself? Come on. You don't no, like us. Mark you, likes you, me, by the way. Huh? Yeah, yeah. He, Mark, Mark said he likes me. No, so but that's you, one. you don't. Why do you that's do one. this, though? No, no, I'm sorry. Two-parter if I could. No, I'm serious. Football why question. do you do this? Like, you know you don't. Like, why do you do no, this? No, no, no. It's not about that. Football question. Football no, no. question. Why do you do this? Like, it would be hard for me to really engage in someone I don't like or something I don't like. I'm just asking why. Like, why? Gotta, gotta pay what the bills, did I do? Of, you didn't do anything. It's not about that. But this but is a what, football why? question. I'm asking you why. Yeah, you can ask. But that, that's okay, not answer me. Because yeah. you want me to answer you. So yeah, you okay, that's why. That's fair. Why? Yeah. Why? Because I have Give questions. Give me your why. why what, what's your why? What do you want to know? Why do you, you always on attack? Like, what, what did we do? Where am, I, where, where am I on attack today? Where am I on attack? Yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to give you opportunities to be on attack. But I'm asking you why. Like, what does it do for you? Like, What's what happened? It's not, it's not about me. But what happens? happened to get you like this? It's a good question. No, I'm serious. Because <laughs> I want to help. Like, because, no, I'm serious. I want to help. Because it's not normal. We can talk about that. We can talk about that. Okay. Can I ask you a football question? No. Seriously. No, we'll talk about that. When we talk about that, I'll talk about that with you. Can we ask you a football question? So let's kind of break this all down here. For me... This is how I, I look at this. Writers in general, people who are able to kind of sit behind a keyboard and sometimes even a microphone, pop off and say shit and get away with it because most of the time coaches just kind of let it roll off their back. They have that duck mentality like it is what it is. It's rat poison. I don't care. I'm not even going to condone it. And I feel like, and I said this in the last video, writers and commentators, we're getting a little more free phone on what we want to say. Reason being, we're not being punched back in the mouth. We're not being held accountable for our words and our actions. All of us included. I'm not here to point the finger like I'm perfect. That's some shit sometimes. Because that's what we do. Our job is to say how we feel and be opinionated about it. It is what it is. Is there a line that can be crossed and have that person feel, may feel what that line is? Absolutely. So here's where things stem from and why there's, it's a little more than just maybe writing a negative article or disagreeing with something. Uh, Keeler, Sean Keeler, wrote a uh, piece with a title calling Coach Ryan a false prophet, which has been said before, he went on to say Sanders was the Bruce Lee of BS and Harold Hill in Designer Shills. For those of you who don't understand the Hill reference, he was a character in Disney 1962 film, The Music Man, who played the role of a band leader while embezzling money meant for uniforms and instruments. He was basically attacking Sanders for being a business fraud. It's, it's a little bit more personal than just saying, hey, the defense looked a little lackluster. Hey, the O-line could use a little help. Hey, Shador maybe could have maybe slowed down a little bit, gone through that process, broke the... That's a whole... You're, you're coming after somebody's character with these, with these statements. So people are going to say, oh, he's a child, but like anybody in their right mind, if you're going to call me out, like that's fine. But if you think that I'm going to sit here and answer your question to give you more pieces, then you're out of your damn mind. And now look, this is going to be a piece of its own. But I'm not going to give you respect if you're not going to give me respect when it's behind closed doors. And then you want to come here and be buddy-buddy? No. No. I. This is my personality. This isn't going to fit with everybody else. I'm Look, I run I run this lane, okay? I'm, I'm a big, I'm a hate, passive-aggressive people. That mentality of writing about it and then going, hey, man, what's up? Hey, hey, man, no. You talking shit. Now we're here. Let's talk about it. No, no, no. I don't want to talk about it. No, no, no. I want to talk about it right now. There's a time and a place for everything. I get that. I love it. You're going to say some shit? I'm going to call you out on it. And that's a typical passive-aggressive behavior. Like, oh, wait, let's just, can I ask you a question? I, no, you can't ask me a damn question. And it's like because he's playing this card, Coach Prime's always going to look like the bad guy. And look, should he have just answered it? No, he shouldn't have. <laughs> I, I, I don't mind it. Why do you hate me? Why do, why do you have this, you know, this hate towards me? What's your, what's your reason? The guy goes, I got to pay the bills. Like, you're admitting to just kind of stirring up shit. For your the betterment of your 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 moving forward, and that's fine. But there's going to be consequences, and finally there were some consequences. So, I I love it. I absolutely love it, boys and girls. You know what we got to do. This show is brought to you by BetUS. We've been partnering with them all season long. They're running absolutely fantastic lines. One of those lines being the over under for five and a half minus one forty five. I know there's a ton of Colorado haters in here, so there's five 
The under five and a half is plus 115. If you're so confident that they're not going to win five, six games, put your money where your mouth is and use the link below. And on your first three deposits, get up to 125% of your deposit, up to $2,000. Again, first three deposits, get 125% of your deposit, up to $2,000. And if for the crazy reason you win, let me know. Tag your, tag your, if they go, if you bet this under half using the link below, and you bet it, send me your, your snippet, and I'll pull up all the receipts at the end of the year and say, congratulations, you were right. I won't have to, but if, you, if you're so confident. Now everyone else that's going to bet the over five and a half, same thing, rules apply. You, you, you lock it in, send me your, your winning receipt. We'll show off that at the end of the year. It's going to be easy bread, easy money, in my opinion, that six wins is going to be uh, a no bueno. In my, this is including the bowl game. Including bowl games. So keep that in mind. Oh, this is regular season wins. Excuse me. Regular season wins. Sometimes other places do uh, bowl games. So use the link in the description. Check out BetUS. Fantastic stuff. Absolutely incredible. Again, they'll be rocking with us all season long. Also, again, busy day. Birthdays. Grandbabies. Talk smacking reporters. We got to commit in the middle of all this to, to the bus. I don't know if it happened today. The, the final roster was dropped. And uh, he was this man was on there, the offensive lineman from LSU. Now, not much from Cardell Thomas over his t- tenure at LSU, then went to FAMU, then was going to go to Central Missouri, never enrolled in class, and here we are at Buffalo. At his four or three years at LSU, played 11 times. So again, not too many starts, but was a five-star prospect. Uh, coming out of high school, 6'3", 310 pounds. I, I don't, again, I don't think we're going to be writing any mad stories about Cardell Thomas coming the end of the season, but... One of, the, one of the reps was asking, like, hey, how do you feel about beefing up your offensive line or bolstering up your offensive line? This is going to help to the beef, I guess you could say, of padding up that offensive line for Colorado. And he kind of went at the, the reporter about that. He had time today. He had time. Coach Prime was uh, he was ready to answer any, any and all questions and, and, and give it to you. Ultimately, again, felt very confident. He feels very good about where they're at. He's ready to go. Even Shiloh and Shador, they spoke after uh, Coach Prime as well. And they go, look, I really don't even want to be here right now. In the sense of like, I don't want to talk. I don't want to. I don't want to jibber jabber. We've done plenty of that. I'm ready to play the game. I'm ready to get out there. I'm ready to hit somebody. Thursday, North Dakota State. I, I, you know, these, this. I, I was. I wanted to say this the other day. It feels like it's going to be one of the most highly anticipated. It feels like it's the most highly anticipated college football season of all time. I think the reason being is because of this situation going here with Colorado. I think that with the realignment of the conferences, you've got Oregon in the Big Ten, USC in the Big Ten. I think Nebraska is starting to find a little bit of rhythm. College football is good when Nebraska is good. I know Buffs and Nebraska hate it, hate each other, and I'm 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 for it. But it makes good for good football when all these teams are doing well, and there's a lot of momentum for a lot of these teams at the moment. You've got that going on. Then, of course, the 12-team playoff just opens the door. It extends this season further than it ever has before. We're going to be rolling in December with prime time quality football. And by golly, if you're not fired up, I mean, you need to check yourself before you wreck yourself because what are we even doing here? It came from my mouth. But yeah, that's what we got going on. Again, continue to smash the sub button. We're about 90, I believe, away from 10,000. I mean, a lot of we could get there before the season. We got three weeks. I think we can do it. I believe we can do it, and I know we're going to do it. That's how I'm feeling about that. Let me know in the comments section. How are you feeling? How are you feeling about the pickup? How are you feeling about the comments? How are you feeling about the, the shot towards the coach at Pitt? I love it. I love it. I love all of it. You know how, how I rock and roll. Again, everyone's going to have their opinions about it. You're going to see it rocking and flowing this week. People are going to be hateful towards it. People are going to like it. Some people are going to be indifferent. Let me know where you sit. Everyone's got an opinion. We're here to listen to it. We'll see you guys in the next one. Peace and love, baby. This video is brought to you by BetUS Sportsbook and Casino.